Welcome to Moose Plays everyone, I'm the Liquor Moose and today we will be going over my week 3 team builder for the second season of the UPAD League. This week we are going up against Rice, coach of the Rice Noctowls and uh, yeah before we get into the meat of the video though, I know I did say in my last UPA upload that I would um, be live comming my PDL uh, playoff games. Uh, I did do that and then realize that that game is awful. <laughs> uh, not not in the sense. Okay, so I lost and I'm not po like the reason I'm not posting it is not because I lost. I don't mind that. It's because like I haven't done a live com in close to a year. Uh, and yeah, my my live live coming is not very exciting. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it's just it, it wasn't that good. So. Uh, I decided just not to post it because it's just not that great content wise, but yeah, either way, we're here for EPA D-League, and yeah, we are going up against Rice, who is a replacement coach for Crypto, who unfortunately had to drop out of the league, uh, so Rice was kind enough to take over. Uh, unfortunately, before leaving, Crypto did leave Rice with two losses, so uh, that's really unfortunate, so... Uh, we're gonna try our best not to give Rice his first win in this league, and <laughs> we, we definitely want to stick to three, uh, try to get to three and zero as well, uh, as that obviously looks a lot better than two and one. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, take a look at what Rice uh, was given, as he did not make changes to his roster, thankfully, so it did not get like blindsided with anything. So Rice inherited Megalopony, Thunderous Incarnate, Mamoswine, Suicune, Roserade, Incineroar, Necrozma. Florges, Mismagius, Steelix, Altaria, and Volbeat. His Z-Move users are the Thunderous Eye, the Mismagius, the Steelix, and the Altaria. So, uh, biggest threat on his team, without a doubt, like, like up here, is the Thunderous Incarnate. That thing, it's extremely fast, and it's just, like, Thunderous is just a huge problem. Uh, for my team to deal with because uh, like my team like okay my team switches into electric decently but it's just thunderous's coverage is just way too insane and then I add on top of that that it gets access to z crystals yeah like thunderous is just like way too huge of a problem uh, then next up you with I, I would say his next biggest threat is probably the Suicune since it's just so bulky and I like I make it a point to myself to refuse to lose to Vincoon. Um so I I try my best with that one. Um and then actually you would think that I would try to mention the Megalopony and the Mamoswine, but uh, I have a bunch of stuff on my team that can handle those things quite adequately, adequately actually. Uh, like, Mamoswine doesn't touch Skarmory or Alamomala, and Megalopony has troubles beating both of those, as well as, um, as well as Celebi. So, like, those two are actually, like, pretty okay in this match. Like, like, easily handled, I want to say. And another big threat is definitely his Necrozma. Um, similar... It's like Thunderous and Suicune kind of mixed into one. It's extremely bulky, but it also has really, really good coverage and lots of setup options. So getting a Toxic on that thing is going to be absolutely crucial. Um, but yeah, other than that, I really don't think there's too, too much to say about this about this matchup. Uh, so yeah, let's just go over the team that I decided to uh, bring. Ooh, that's the, that's the last set. That's my mistake. Spoilers, I guess. Uh, but anyways, so, obviously, physically defensive Skarmory. I see a Mamoswine on that team. This pretty much has to come. And even if he doesn't bring... Like, even if he's like, okay, he has a Skarmory, I can't bring Mamoswine. Then this thing is just, like, a good physical sponge in general. Like, it, this this can help take pressure uh, pressure off of my other mons from his Megalopony, if that's the case. Um, and then just, je like pretty standard stuff like roost uh defog for his own hazard stealth rocks for mine and then we really only need brave bird as that can still dent the um it can still dent the mammoth swine and it deals massive damage to the megalopony um yeah like this thing is actually insanely bulky adamant life orb mammoth swine does not do a ko with ice school crash that's fucking ridiculous <laughs> oh my god like that's why that's why i love skarmory like there's just so many, like, Mamoswine to other teams would just be such a huge threat, but, like, Skarmory is just here, and Mamoswine doesn't do a ridiculous amount, and it's just great. And, yeah. Again, not too much to say about Skarmory, and to be honest, this probably won't deviate too much, like, in the rest of the season, but, like, Skarmory is... Everyone knows what Skarmory does. It's extremely good at what it does, so it doesn't really need to be... It doesn't need to be that versatile. It just needs to be good at doing this. <laughs> but next up, we have... An insane breaker in this match with 
my Mega Gallade. So we have we we're running Subsor Zance close combat and knockoff. So I I am opting away from my bulk up Drain Punch, even though in my opinion that's the preferred set that I like. But uh, with this uh, with this spread, a not invested, not boosted Suicune cannot break my sub with Scald. So. Uh, I can live that and then uh, attempt to Source Dance up and Close Combat is act to a max HP Suicune. So not granted, not physically, not physically uh, defensive investment invested, but usually Vincoon runs like near max speed or like whatever speed it needs to. It's usually fast over bulky first, um, but yeah, it's just so funny because like to a max HP Suicune, like. At plus two, close combat kills after rocks. <laughs> That's actually insane. Like, if I if I didn't have to speed creep, what am I speed creeping here? Uh, his oh his Miss Magius. If I didn't have to speed creep that, and I could run a little bit more into bulk, I would absolutely. Or I wouldn't even run it into bulk. I would just run attack investment, so that way I can guarantee get the Oko on it. But even then, just being a plus two KOing after rocks is actually insane. But more than likely, the safe bet is to knock off first, to knock off his leftovers. As even if he does switch into rocks, he'll just heal up with leftovers. So, but either way, knock off into close combat easily KOs. Like, in honestly, most things on his team. Um, the only thing that I might have trouble taking down with this specific set is his Necrozma, and that's only because. Um, Oh god, that's only because like after I knock off his item, then knock up knock off is doing a lot less, and obviously it resists close combat. Um, but yeah, other than that, like this thing just destroys his team. Uh, I guess the other Pokemon that could switch into this relatively easily is Florges, but to be fair, it uh, one Rice has to fear Poison Jab, and two um, Swords Dance like plus two close combat does two a KO of Florges. But I think he seriously dents me back with Moonblast, so. I mean, that's whatever. Like, this is just a very, very good breaker in this match, so it was a, in my opinion, a relatively obvious bring, and, like, even just these two coverage moves is just, like, insane for this match. So, next up, we have a Rocky Helmet Celebi, and this, if you can't tell, is going to be my main switch into the Mega Lopunny, as, uh, like, everyone always sees Mew as the, um, as like the best Mega Lopunny switch in, and Celebi can perform. Oh, excuse me, Celebi can perform a similar role. The only thing that Mew has over Celebi is that uh, it can Willow Wisp the Lopunny after. So I can't do that, but I can spam Recover, and uh, Mega Lopunny's return is uh, guaranteed three hit KO. Uh, it's noteworthy that I did think about just running Max Viz Def with leftovers, and then his return actually isn't even a four hit KO. But I decided to uh, put. Uh, I decided to invest in uh, speed a little bit. This is enough to outspeed max speed Suicune because, like I said, I, I refuse to lose to a Vincoon. So that way I can toxic it before it tries to get behind a sub. And then uh, Giga Drain, even uninvested, can still break a sub from max HP Suicune. Uh, I think at plus one, I think only like a low roll doesn't kill. Like it's a pretty, it's a favorable roll in my chance to break the sub with Giga Drain. And even then, like I think this, I think this coverage and utility stuff is really good for this matchup, especially considering what I anticipate to happen is I switch in Celebi into Lopunny. He, like, I mean, he could go for Return or High Jump Kick, but if he goes for like Power Up Punch or Fake Out or whatever, he gets one Rocky Helmet damage, and then he goes for another attack. Hopefully, but it's potentially like he potentially couldn't. Hopefully, he goes for another attack as I click Recover and gets basically another round of Rocky Helmet for free. And then he'll switch out, and then I U-turn into something else. Um, but yeah, after two Rocky Helmet damage, the Mega Lopunny is in range for uh, my Scarfer, which you will see... Well, I mean, you kind of already saw at the beginning, but yeah. Um, again, this is going to be my switch into the Mega Lopunny, mainly. Um, if it ever gets to a point where uh, Thunderous... Like, his Lopunny is down and Thunderous is in, and it doesn't have... Like, I mean, it's hard, It's so hard to say. Like, you could have dark coverage, you could have poison coverage. I'm not really sure. Thunderous, Thunderous' move pool is actually, like, crazy, crazy. Um, yeah, but anyway, speaking of that Thunderous, um, <laughs> well, Muck's making an appearance, and to be honest, I brought this in. Like, I, I brought this because, like, all of his, like, I want to say lower tier stuff has, like, actually a lot of problems breaking Muck. Like, this pretty much walls, um, 
this walls Florgis, it walls Miss Magius, it walls Altaria, well, like, special Altaria, um, even, and actually to, like, not even to an extent, it does wall Roserade, because the hardest thing he can do is Leaf Storm, and that lowers his special attack, so, Muck actually seems like a pretty decent bring, but then I actually looked at Calx, and this thing actually does not get, uh, three hit K, er, sorry, this thing doesn't, doesn't get two hit KO'd, by uh, Life Orb Psychic from Thunderous Incarnate with Black Sludge. And that's actually pretty impressive. So this is actually like, a big reason this is here is this is going to be my primary switch into the Thunderous Incarnate as uh, Thunderbolt isn't doing a ridiculous amount to this. Uh, and then I can fire off a Toxic and I mean, he won't, he shouldn't at least switch Roserade in onto this. Um, odds are I see him switching to Krosma onto this, which is like, it, it's my main hope that he switches Necrozma onto this so that way I can Toxic. And because I'm a Poison type, I will not miss the Toxic, so that's really good. And we needed two Toxic users because, again, like, he has some really annoying bulky shit too. Like, he has a Suicune and the Necrozma and the Florges to an extent. Even, like, I mean, Altaria's natural cure, so not really that much. But even uh, Incineroar, because I think bulky Incineroar actually, like... Uh, I don't know if it, like, threatens too much of my team, but... Uh, it does like present a problem to the specific team that I brought, especially considering that um, that Incineroar is just a naturally good counter to Celebi. So I think it does have some merit, but either way, like Toxic was pretty no drawback on this just because I can't miss. Poison Jab is for main stab, and we two hit KO, even physically defensive Florges. Um, and it's just a, a pretty decent uh, form of damage output. Plus, with Poison Touch, we have 60% uh, chance to poison. And like I've said before, like his other abilities really aren't that good, like Stench. Um, like this Pokemon's attacks without a chance to flinch have 10% to flinch, but I'm slow as shit anyways. Um, and actually, I should switch this to. Uh, hang on, let me look. Let me look at the thing. I know why I have minus speed here. Um, Okay, I guess it's not really that important. I opted to put Shadow Sneak here. Uh, the reason I have a minus speed nature here is because at first I was anticipating putting the remaining four into special attack and putting Fire Blast on here, so that way Steelix doesn't have a, an absolutely free switch in every time. But I'm not really too sure that he's going to bring Steelix. Um, the only way I see him bringing Steelix is if he absolutely fears my Jolteon, but I really don't think he does, only because he has a Mega Lopany which outspeeds it. Um, and then at the same time, like, I'm sure Necrozma doesn't take a ridiculous amount, and Florges is, like, pretty specially bulky, so I really don't think Steelix makes an appearance. Like, the only reason Steelix would come, in my opinion, is it, either if he fears Jolteon or Diancie. I don't think he fears Diancie that much, considering its HP is really low, so Mega Lopany shouldn't have too much of an issue dealing with it. Even same thing with, like, Thunderous or Mamoswine. Um, and then, like I said, like, Jolteon, like, there's a lot of things on Rice's team that, um, <clears throat> there's a lot of things on Rice's team that not take advantage of it, but can switch into, can switch into or revenge it pretty decently. So, I don't think the Steelix will come. If it does, I'll regret not having Fire Blast here, but I think I can work around it considering that, um, I do have my Mega Gallade, which can always close combat it for massive damage, plus, uh, my Scarfer again. We'll, we'll get into that later, but yeah. Not too much to say about this. Protect is here for a guaranteed Black Sludge recovery, and then uh, Toxic damage on the on his bulky stuff that I Toxic, and then Shadow Sneak for priority here, just in case that his Thunderous gets like really, really worn down and it's just getting way too out of hand, like it like its agility or something like that. Shadow Sneak is just kind of like an emergency button, to be completely honest. Um, but yeah, it's not doing too much. But if it's like so close and like you know, I didn't get rocks up a turn sooner or something like that um <clears throat> i will uh i have i just i at least have this option to uh get rid of like problem mons in the end game the only thing this can't get rid of is the little opening because it's resisted but hopefully shadow sneak will be fine uh next up we have um a a very similar <laughs> tornadoes to what i've been bringing um, so like I said, I refuse, refuse, refuse to lose to Vincoon because it's just the absolute worst feeling when you can't break a Vincoon. So uh, we have Taunt here to stop him from Calm Minding and subbing and stuff. To a classic Vincoon, the only thing he should be able to do is Scald, which with my HP investment and the, like, I mean, I mean, it's just four points, but still with my uh, bulk investment, Scald shouldn't be doing a ridiculous amount. And we are special, so the burn doesn't really matter, even though it could be annoying. And the point of this is that 
the point of this investment is so that Grass Knot into Z Grass Knot uh, always kills max HP. Well, like standard Vencoon, which is like max HP and then like like a little bit in Spadef. Uh, so uh, that's the reason this is here. And even if like it gets to a point where I don't even need the Grass DMZ, like I don't know. I just refuse to lose to Vincoon, and uh, even then, like, Z Grassnock can still dent Mamoswine if he brings it. Um, he could, like, I don't know if you would think I would bring Scarf Tornadus, uh, because he does have a Mega Lopany. Um, but yeah, even, like, Z Grassnock can still dent that Steelix if he does decide to bring that. Um, I think, well, I guess, like, yeah, so Bloom Doom from Grassnock is always, like, base 160. That doesn't get, that part doesn't change about, uh, with the weight, so regular Grassnock. Um, regular Grass Knot probably won't do mu too much to Florges, but I mean, I don't think Z Grass Knot would either. And then we just have Hurricane here as like, you know, general, like, general stab is Hurricane. Bird, bird spam things have issues switching into it. I think his only resist is the Thunderous and the Steelix. Yeah, that's it. So, uh, and then, so then everything else gets hit neutrally, so, um... Floor just kind of takes advantage of this, and he kind of, and it kind of takes advantage of like my last mod. But again, like with Muck here, I really don't think Floor just is that big of an issue. And plus, I have a Skarmory here, and he has to fear Iron Head, uh, so that's always a thing. And even then, I can always, um, I can always taunt the Floor just as well, as then it would pretty much be forced to go for Moon Blasts, which do literally like I think it does a maximum of nine percent or something like that to my Muck. So, uh, I think, I don't really fear Floor just that much, even though I think it's actually a pretty decent bring against my team in general, um, but I don't really fear it since I have this muck here. Um, and then, yeah, last up we have, uh, Choice Scarf High Dragon, because it's, like, he has a Megalopony, I need something to outspeed it. Scarf High Dragon seemed pretty good, like, just because High Dragon's a uh, decent Scarfer, enough speed for his Roserade, yep, that's the thing, I'd be speed creeping. So if he does knock off my, um... If he does knock off my scarf, then I can still outspeed uh, most of his team. Actually, the only things I wouldn't outspeed without scarf would be the Megalopony, the Thunderous, and the Miss Magius. So that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, Dark Pulse. Uh, Dark Pulse does. Uh, I think yeah, it guaranteed to hit KO's offensive Necrozma, and I think it's a roll on max HP. Um, so that's always a thing. Draco Meteor is here as General Nuke. Fire Blast is the best coverage, uh, specifically again for that Steelix if it does show up. Um, but it's just like, ugh, barring the Suicune, and I guess the Incineroar, Fire Blast is pretty no drawback, um, and then U-Turn, obviously, because <laughs> Scarf U-Turn, always good. Um, but yeah, so not too much to say about this, it's pretty, like, this is a pretty obvious set, but it is needed because of that Mega Lopany. So, that is the team I am bringing, hopefully this works out, let me know what you guys think of this team in the comment section down below. And uh, yeah, keep your eye out on the channel tomorrow for when the battle with Rice goes live. I don't think, uh, I also don't think Rice put any links, so unfortunately I can't link, link you to any of his stuff, Jesus. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.